Hey guys, welcome to today's MCAT question of the day. I'm Spencer Simcoe, a 97th percentile MCAT tutor, and I'll be walking you through today's practice problems if you're one of my private tutoring students. Today's question comes from lesson four of the biology one module. Be sure to hit pause and try this question out for yourself before watching my explanation. So this question combines a few MCAT concepts and we're gonna go through them one by one. So the first thing we have to understand about this question is the effect of stress on the nervous system. So stress is going to release these endocrine hormones called adrenaline and cortisol, and those are going to act to activate the sympathetic nervous system. And the sympathetic nervous system is going to do all of these things, which are basically the opposite of everything that the parasympathetic nervous system does. Um, but the one that we are most interested in here is the increase in heart rate. So we know that our heart rate is going to increase, but what does that mean about our action potentials? So if these are our heart rate action potentials, these are the pacemaker ones, meaning these, this is what the SA node is doing constantly, all day, every day. Um, and so if it's going to get faster, that means they're going to be closer together. So this distance right here would be a lot shorter if it were faster, and it would be further apart if it were slower. So looking back at our question, let's go through these answer choices one by one. The first one says an inhibitory input triggers an increased interval between the peaks of action potentials. Well, this would actually be if stress were to activate the parasympathetic nervous system. So this is the opposite of what we're looking for. An inhibitory input triggers a temporary interruption in the firing macro potentials. Um, inhibitory would again be the opposite of what we're looking for, but we're actually never going to have anything that introduces a temporary inter inter interruption in the firing of action potentials. Um, an excitatory input trigger triggers a single action potential with a large amplitude. Excitatory does sound right, but it's not the amplitude that matters, it's the frequency. So if we look at this last one, it says excitatory input triggers a decreased interval between the peaks of action potentials. That is a correct answer because we're going to see those active potentials get closer together with the excitatory sympathetic input. So answer choice D would be the correct answer here. If you enjoyed today's MCAT question of the day, be sure and give it a like. For more MCAT questions of the day, be sure to follow this YouTube channel and enroll in our free MCAT prep course found at mcatselfprep.com. If you're really looking to maximize your MCAT score, be sure and check out our elite tutoring services and request a free consultation with any of our available tutors. We'd love to chat with you about your situation and how you can maximize your MCAT score. We look forward to hearing from you soon, and we'll see you next time.